Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. How wonderful to be here with you. Every day I say that, I want you to know I really do mean it and I appreciate you being there and all the good things you do for us. You support us, you know, financially, but also your words of encouragement are so important and I'm glad you're there. And this is a program that I've wanted to do for a long time and actually the Lord has opened the door to do it. Uh, from time to time you've met our wonderful floor director, Brooke Larson, and uh, she comes from a wonderful Christian home. But just a few short years ago, her energetic dad, and he was in his 50s, I believe, had a severe stroke and is now living the life of a quadriplegic. And the way the family has faced this and come together has warmed my heart. It has just, in a very special way, proven what God in a life of a family can do. Well, Brooke's getting married uh, shortly, and her parents are here, so I was able to arrange an interview. And I call them the Faith Family. And when you hear Julie Larson talk, and also Brooke, uh, you will find out that when the storms of life are raging, when you have the Lord in your heart and your life in your family, it makes a big difference. So I want you to meet Julie, and you've already met Brooke, but I want you to hear their story. So listen to this. Well, welcome, Julie. Welcome to Homekeepers. So glad to have you with us. And let's get let's get a two shot on these girls. They. <coughs> <laughs> this is mother and daughter, and, and uh, boy, you could almost pass for twins. <laughs> now, Brooke is our floor director, and she's been on camera a few times, right. but I've kind of been going around trying to, you know, just take a form and uh, see if we can find anything wrong with Brooke. No. <laughs> I'm telling you, we can't. <laughs> you ra I'm serious. You raised one sweet, wonderful daughter. She's been that way since birth. <laughs> she is. She is a blessing, and I'm so glad oh, uh, to work with her. Now, your life so far has not turned out any way like you thought it might, right? No, it didn't. Um, your husband had a, a stroke, which leaves him quadruple plegic and uh, nonverbal. So how long ago did this, this happen? It was four years ago, September the 12th. Okay, tell us your story. Tell us how it started. And well, I was working from home. John was working, in fact, had taken Brooke to work. It was, yeah. it was two weeks before Brooke was to start her job here. Mm -hmm. And um, we had actually had some friends staying with us for a while. And um, if they hadn't been there, John possibly wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. Uh, but he got off work, or he uh, got into, was talking with a friend and was sitting on a mower, and he started getting dizzy and he started getting nauseous, and he said the Holy Spirit told him he was having a stroke. So he turned to Mike and said, "Call 911. I'm having a stroke." And they, you know, quickly got me out of the uh, my office and I came down. And by that time, within just a few seconds, he had lost all ability to stand and sit. Um, I was holding him up waiting for the ambulance to come and he was couldn't even talk he could mm -hmm. just mumble and I could understand what he was saying he was saying I'm sorry and I love you over and over and over again now what's the percentage of people who survive this kind of well we found out later that only 99% only 1% survive 99% um, do not make it it's not the type of stroke that's on one side of the brain or the other it's in the brain stem so it takes out the, the whole body uh, and usually it takes out all of your ability to breathe and just function, all the organs. Um, so John was in ICU, f you know, on a feeding tube and, and incubated, um, and they were pretty much waiting for him to have a second stroke and, you know, not make it. It's what I found out later. Um, but we, Brooke was there. She, we quickly got to the hospital. They airlifted him to a, a major um, Washington Hospital Center in our area. And they came out to us and said they didn't think they were going to be able to do the surgery, which was to put a stent. They said his, his veins were very thin, and most likely he would just brain bleed out. And Brooke and I just began to pray, and literally it was like 20 minutes. They came back to us and said they were able to do it. And I said, but then they began to tell us the demise, you know, what was going to happen, what was our life was going to be like. There wasn't really much hope at all. There wasn't. They said... He's probably going to have another stroke. He's probably going to die. If he does survive, 
he will be, they call it locked in. It just means mm -hmm. all you have is the use of your eyes. And as I began yes. saying all of this, mm -hmm. you know, it was just hard to fathom. Yes, I, I learned more because Brooke uh, sent me a video mm -hmm. of you telling this story. And I found out today that that's a, your first time to do it. Girl, you need to go on the road. <laughs> <laughs> really good. And uh, some, something that struck me was your indomitable faith kind of from the beginning. And, I, I, and um, obviously your husband had it too. But Brooke was telling me some things about her dad, and I, I want you to tell me because that was everybody should have had a daddy like you. Yeah, my he's amazing. Uh -huh. um, like I told her in college and stuff, when I would have a lot of you know things going on and you know essays, or I would call my dad and um, I would get off the phone feeling so energized, so <laughs> like so I, like my faith was so pumped up. You know, I felt like I could just do whatever and. Um, he, I felt like he would leave everyone like he left everyone like that when, um, when he would talk to them, and so that was just my dad. He was always an encour. He's he is an encourager. Um, he's just amazing, and I'm just glad that he's here today. Mm -hmm. And he's he is a man of faith. You and I picked up uh, watching your little video that you're a strong woman of faith. One one of the first things that I believe you said was, "Whose report are you going to believe now?" You got a pretty bad report, yeah, I would yeah, say. Yeah. And um, there was that faith that ignited. Now, in our earlier conversation, you mentioned that you kind of grew up in church and all, but mm -hmm. uh, you didn't get that kind of faith just going to Sunday school. Where, where did you right. get that? Yeah. Well, you know, it's a choice. It's a choice to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a choice to recognize that the Holy Spirit is within us that can teach us and mm -hmm. to guide us. And, and we have to yield to that. Um, and it was a choice I made when I was 22 years old and really haven't looked back. Praise God. Um, but, you know, whose report will you believe? That, that happened when the doctors were saying the horrible things about what our life was going to be. And I can only describe it as, you know, the Holy Spirit shaking my shoulders and saying, uh, but Julie, this is what the Lord said, but Julie, whose report will you believe? And when he said that, I'm literally, you know, having this internal conversation with the Lord while the doctors are continuing to tell me what was going on and I think I missed probably half of it. Um, but at that moment I had the supernatural and I call it supernatural because you know you can read the Bible and you can study scripture and and but until you have to stand on scripture you know it's completely different you know you're tested in that moment and so I'm so that whose report, I was going to get a lot of different reports. I was going to have to deal with a lot of things. So that scripture meant a lot to me because um, it, it just it has sustained me. And it's, I have a supernatural joy, a supernatural faith, a supernatural strength that only comes from the Lord. Right. You know, I've said before, if I didn't have the Lord in this situation, I'd be curled up in a ball somewhere. And that's the key. And that's the key is to, is to let God work through these situations in our life. You know, whether it's my story of a stroke or someone else's story of losing a child or whatever the story is, we have a choice to make. Mm -hmm. We have a choice to use, allow God to use I th us. I think you said you even put scriptures on his body. All over his body, yes. <laughs> I wrote, the doctor said I was crazy, but yes, I took a, a <laughs> black permanent magic marker yeah. uh, and it wrote, I wrote, wrote all it. over his stories. I have pictures of it. Yeah, yes. all over him, all, all over, over his, his neck, his, his yeah. neck, his arms. Um, well, I got no, that. that. <laughs> I got the, the scripture. I just wanted scriptures everywhere. You know, I wanted the nurses and doctors to see scripture. They couldn't miss it. They all. couldn't. Yes, and they pulled me out of the room several times. You know, and thought that I had maybe lost my mind. But you know, <laughs> you fight with the word, and that's what I was doing. I was fighting with the word every in every way I could possibly think of. You also, I believe, really stress that. You didn't want anybody talking negative around him. Right. And there's plenty of scripture for that. Yes. Uh, about our words and so forth. But, uh, you know, the Bible's plain. It says there's life and death in the tongue. But also, uh, when you surround your life with positive things, I have a few things around my house that speak to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they're hanging on the wall. Right. And um, how much of a difference, how did he respond from, from, from the very beginning? Did he... 
he never lost knowing you or he just couldn't he, communicate? Yeah, he knew, uh, he knew me the entire time. Um, his cognitive ability didn't change. Mm -hmm. um, it was just his muscular ability for the nerves to tell the muscles what to do. Um, he's a big jokester, so one time they had him spell my name on a, you know, through an alphabet board and he spelled it J-U-L-I-A. And I'm like, I'm not Julia, it's, I'm Julie, you know, is there someone, I, is, is there something you need to tell me? So he was a big jokester. Um, he, you know, I didn't need little plaques around the house of faith scriptures because John was a continual um, presence of faith and positiveness mm -hmm. to the point that was actually irritating, you know. <laughs> this is prior stroke. Um, but he's a man of great faith, and he would say things that were just, you know, Moses-like, like, thus saith the Lord, and you're like, you know, you're, you sound crazy, but he, he corrects me all the but time. It's true. It is true, and I've learned, I've learned, it's taken me years, mm -hmm. um, because I fought him many years on the sum of his faith that I thought was not, um, you know, based in reality, and it wasn't. It was based in the supernatural, and I see it now. And so now when he yeah. says things to me, I'm like, okay, Lord, if that's... Oh, boy, I wish a lot of men could just mimic him. To, to think that a, a, a girl in college, you know, and, and you're young and you're so vulnerable and all, and she calls her dad, mm -hmm. and her dad, you know, Pumps got her full flying of faith. Yeah. Pumps when you hang up the phone. That's right. Why a lot of kids need a daddy mm -hmm. like that. Now, you, I also think you said that one doctor said he was the most critical patient he had, but he just liked to be around him or something. He did. Uh, well, a little backstory to that. Uh, I, we found out about five weeks after John had um, started to communicate a little bit more, and he shared with us through a, a board that um, God had taken him to heaven. And on day three of uh, an ICU, God had taken him to heaven. He had seen many things. He heard many things, but he was walking with Jesus, and Jesus basically told him, John, it's not your time yet. I'm giving you an assignment, and your assignment is to go back and love people. And he communicated this by some way, yeah, he started out with doing it with a letters board. Letters that you could put yeah, the words together. Yeah, they gave us a little alphabet board and it had ABCs here and he would blink every time I would point to the letter and then we would go to the row and then the letter and it got very tedious. And then he started getting some head control. Um, and so I the, I really believe it was the Lord. He showed me how to, to put together a, a headband with a laser on it. And yeah, I so, think the Lord probably told so, how to do that. <laughs> we put the alphabet board on the wall, and mm -hmm. so he would point like this to the letters, and yeah. that's how we began to communicate. And it was just so much easier. We don't do that now. John has gotten enough speech therapy that his articulation is, is well enough for me to read his lips. And sometimes he can voice. He just doesn't have the strength, the muscle strength, mm -hmm. to blow across the vocal cords for him to be heard. But sometimes he does. But right now we just read lips, and that's it's, how we communicate. Yeah, it seems like he gets better a little bit at, at a time. The more therapy, the and more he, he does. And he has, uh, he's come a lot farther than they ever. He has. He's ever now predicted. able to get on the computer. They told us the first six months, that's all that he would get back. Um, and I think it was maybe a year and a half into his therapy. And it was actually through a friend who helped develop um, a, a little computer program for him to communicate. Had, had little boy sounds that had things like hi Brooke or if someone yeah. would walk into the room it you know he even said hi Elvis which was our dog at the time <laughs> and he would so he could just click the button and it would speak for him. They said it couldn't be done and you said whose report are you going yeah. to That's right that's <laughs> right. <laughs> so how are things now? Um, there was a time when you could have lost your home, mm -hmm. your car, uh, you've maintained that and now you have a certain normalcy, at least norm for you. You're working outside the home now, but you have help with him, yeah. and it's better all the way around. It is. Um, you know, it's it's always evolving. Mm -hmm. You know, things never stay the same, and mm -hmm. I've had to learn to be flexible um, with change, with mm -hmm. caring for a quadriplegic who can't speak. Um, you know, I did it on my own for a year and a half, and then we were able to get into a program that gives me help now. And so now we, for the last month, we've kind of are into a new routine mm -hmm. with this new, uh, Maroof as our aid. 
And so I just felt like it was time to work outside the home. And I just came to John. I said, I just feel the Holy Spirit saying, it's time. And mm -hmm. I said, are you comfortable with me working outside the home? And he said, yes. So mm -hmm. I just began applying. And so now, yes, I work outside the home. You know, the biggest concern for John was always, will people take the time to listen to me? Because mm -hmm. it takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort oh. to have a conversation with John. I, I wouldn't even pretend to uh, guess mm -hmm. what, you, what you've had to learn. I only admire how beautifully, how beautifully you've done it. And you've, you've allowed the Lord to shine right through. Because I'm preacher's kid, preacher's wife. And, and I know a lot of Christians who've never never grasp what you have here, uh, but you are an illustration of how well it serves you when you really trust the Lord and yeah. you commit it to Him. Now, Brooke, how long till you get married now? This will probably show after <laughs> you get know. married. Yeah, yeah I'll, be, I'll officially be a Mrs. <coughs> Rathmel. Mrs. <laughs> Rathmel, um, so it's what, four, three days. Three days. Three days, so Sunday. I told her all of us old gals have been living vicariously through <laughs> yeah. her. It's been so much fun, <laughs> but, uh, in yeah. a way, Daddy's going to walk you down the aisle. Yes, yeah. that was really important to me, um, you know, regardless of how we were going to do it mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that he you was there. You give me goosebumps. Girl. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be able to even, like, contain myself. <laughs> it's it's going that. to be wonderful, but you know what? I want our wonderful audience to meet your dad. Yes. And um, we're going to take a break, and he'll be back, and... and uh, we should warn them that he cries very easily. He probably always always had a tender spirit, he did. Yeah. but the he did. the stroke just it, just yeah. really uh, kind of ignited it. Makes yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's has a hard time controlling his emotions, mm -hmm. and so whatever is right there on the surface, it mm -hmm. just comes right out. But he's so. he's there. He's there he's 100. There. Yeah. And uh, both of you, um, what a beautiful illustration of God's grace and. Oh, he wants to work in her life. I know you are anxious to meet John. I have met him, and he looks, looks really good. He really does. Uh, so after this message, uh, you're going to meet John right before he walks his daughter down the aisle. Stay with us. <laughs> Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, it's my privilege to uh, welcome to Homekeepers uh, Mr. John Larson. So glad to have you on the program. Uh, Brooke has told us about you, and we've prayed for you, and just really glad to have you. And you've got to be awfully proud of Brooke. Very. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. She has been such a, a blessing here. Uh, I understand you have a couple boys in the service. What, uh, what branches? Uh, Army. 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 The Army. Army. The Army. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you've got to be awfully proud of all of them. And uh, right, rightly so. How, um, how have you faced this situation that you've gone through and you, you've come through <laughs> really, uh, you know, with faith in the Lord? I trust him. What's that? I trust him. You trust him. That's that's very <laughs> obvious, and as well as your family. And uh, do you feel you're getting a little stronger all the time? Every day. Every day. Praise God for that. Uh, both both of you have such a wonderful attitude. How <laughs> how, how in the world did you get together? I was uh, John's first employee at his family uh, wedding gown store. No kidding. Yes. Uh, and, uh, she, in. she came in <laughs> looking for a gown. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that far along, but yes, soon after we started dating. And uh, it's been almost 30, well, we've been together 32 years. Uh, yeah. Married 28. And 29. Um, in a situation like this, 
those vows become very real. Yeah. Mm. Yes, you don't think in sickness and health at 55 years of age. <laughs> yes. Right? Right. Yeah. And you certainly don't think about them when you're making them. No, you, know, you don't. You got your pretty well, dress that's, on. That's life. That's every bit of life. You know, it's only until you actually go through something that you know if you can go through it. And we know we can only go through it successfully with the Lord. Mm. And, uh, we well, I think that. you all are an illustration of mm. the wedding vows. And a lot of young people are making up their own vows, and some of them are so silly. You know, I've, I've watched them on TV, and they'll say, uh, they're reading them, you, know, you make me laugh. That's, that's not going to carry you very far. <laughs> but when you say, for better, for worse, stick to sin in health, you people are an <laughs> illustration yeah. of this, yeah. just a beautiful illustration. I know he's going to make him cry. Yeah. You know, John, John is, <clears throat> it's important for John to live his life as if he's not had a stroke. He will uh -huh. tell you he's already healed in Jesus' name. He doesn't, he's, Boy. he doesn't <laughs> let anything stop him. Yeah. His purpose is to just live his life and love people. <laughs> and um, he believes God's, total healing and uh, so you know you don't have to wait to live your life until the manifestation of anything comes you have to live your life in the process of it all and John does that beautifully yeah you know, what's so beautiful about this you're on the same page <laughs> absolutely well, he had to get me to the same page Did he? he pulled me along for a while but it's easy it's, it's so much easier to have the faith that I have when you are equally yoked. And John has such faith mm -hmm. and he's brought me along to where, you know, we are equally yoked in that. Uh, oh, it's obvious. And um, I can't tell you just what a blessing you've been to me uh, as I've learned your story. And now I have the privilege to meet you and the privilege for uh, you to tell thousands of people mm -hmm. what the Lord is doing. Now, God, I ask you a question. I bet you'll cry on this one. <laughs> What's it going to be like to walk Brooke down the aisle? That's so hard, right? There we are. There we are. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I will try to keep it together. <laughs> try to keep it together. Yeah. Oh, bless your heart. Well, um, does it uh, does it comfort you if I say she's really marrying a nice guy? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes. I love Matt. I love you Matt. love Matt, yes, yes. And, and so do we. <laughs> yes. We're so, well, John, I just thank you so <gasps> much for coming on. And um, for you, Julie, I don't know, this program, we've been on the air a couple of decades almost, <laughs> but this program is just such an illustration of the power and the grace of God yes. to take you through anything. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. so, um, will you come and see us next time you come to Florida? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. What? Absolutely. Absolutely. I got it. Yes. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I may walk. I may walk in. I may walk in. That's My right. Walk in. Surprise Amen. everybody. That's I'll believe right. that. Yes. That's what he's believing for. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, friends, uh, stay with me. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Well, I am so thankful that the Lord helped us to put this together so I could bring it to you. I told you at the top of the program, I call them the faith family, and now you know why, for sure. Now, um, this, these interviews were made a few weeks ago, and since that time, Brooke has gotten married, and uh, she is, she's so happy. She kind of keeps us all up, but her dad was there, and he did escort her down the aisle, and she looked absolutely gorgeous, as you can see, and I'm so thankful that God brought Brooke to us, and she did meet her husband right here at CTN. He's a wonderful Christian guy. 
and now we can bring the whole family together because there's nothing like an illustration of true faith and you have seen it. I have watched through the years Christians get very, very angry when something that is so negative comes into their life and to meet this family is like a refreshing cool drink of water on a very hot day and I'm thankful that you could meet them and I was telling Brooke earlier that uh, just watching them interact with something else uh, maybe almost miraculous because um, if John needed you know to wipe his face a little bit either Brooke would grab a towel or Julie would and uh, they all took care of him and he interacted and talked uh, just as I'm talking to you today and so now that you've seen this I want you to think of the things that have come into your life that you uh, complain about. I had a little upset a few days ago and I uh, was talking to someone about it, but I said, you know, I do not dare complain, not with the health that God has given me through the years, not for a moment. I want you to look at the Larsons and then ask the question, what do I have to complain about? because God doesn't always reveal his purposes to us. Uh, we don't know the end of the story. I remember a song many years ago when I was a child and the verse said, I do not know why oft round me my hopes all shattered seem to be. God's perfect plan I cannot see but someday I'll understand. Someday he'll make it plain to me. Someday when I his face shall see. Someday from fears I shall be free. For someday I will understand. And you could be going through something really this uh, extreme, this traumatic. And maybe you haven't faced it the way Julie has or the way John has but they're always trusting. Why don't you wake up every morning, no matter what's going on, say, Lord, I'm going to trust you today. I believe that you know every single thing that's going on in my life. I can trust you with it. And I'm going to go ahead and fulfill what I believe is the will of God and your plan for me this day. I'm going to do it one day at a time. One time I thought I didn't have enough money to get through life and God said, do you have enough for today? You've got enough for today. You've got the strength. You've got the grace. You've got God himself. Thanks for being with us. Out of time, but remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.